Welcome back to I Am Athlete Daily presented by Vivid Seats. I am Kayla Nicole and I got my guys with me, Brandon, Josh, Mike, and Monty. Now, y'all are all receivers, so maybe you can relate to this, okay? Listen to this clip from Titans receiver Calvin Ridley and what he had to say about not getting the ball this weekend. I had targets in the, what part of the game I had targets? Fourth quarter, a lot of them. All right, then, so, shit, I need some in the beginning of the game, too, then, like, it's getting crazy for me. So, I'm just, you know, it is what it is, but you, I, I suck today, I gotta be better. But I gotta get the ball a little early in the game so I can be in the game and here with the team so I can play well also. All right, y'all, initial reactions. What are we thinking? I'm thinking you gave him $92 million. He should be one of the first guys to touch the ball. All us, we receivers, we know that. Get your guys going early. You know what I'm saying? That's like flying a girl a lot and not even going to see her. <laughs> For real, you gave him $92 million. Yeah, Give your boy the ball, man. I'm thinking feed your, boy the ball. Feed your horse. I'm, I'm thinking feed your you can't horse. throw the ball to yourself. You can't. All right, at receiver, you know, just as well as B know, we got to rely on a lot of people to have success. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem right now in Tennessee. The quarterback is a young, I think he might be a second year quarterback. He ain't got no running game. So how do we get him the ball if we can't get him the ball? And to your point, eight targets, zero catches. And Monty, the camera's that way. Yeah, I was gonna... <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I had to... <laughs> they talking, so I don't want to have my back. No. <laughs> Monty, my guy. Okay, Monty, now that you know where the camera's at, let the people know what's going on. What are we about to do? The camera's right here. This is I'm Athlete Daily. Let's go. Let's go. Good job, bro. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here so I won't get fined. We talking about practice. Come see me. I'm about that. If it's gonna be an interview, I'm gonna conduct it. So I'll answer my own questions. Okay, fellas, let's dive deeper into the heart, mind, and spirit of athletes. It's one of my favorite segments. This is fourth and inches. And it's time for some real conversation. Joining me today, we've got Brandon Marshall and a very special guest, Martellus Bennett. I, I just don't know. I don't know how y'all talk me into this right now. <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here. I'm, I'm here for everybody, you know, so it's kind of cool. Your voice in this conversation is going to be super key. So have we have we ever seen a director go from behind the camera to sitting in a chair and performing? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, movies, yeah, yeah. movies, they do it all the time. Who's you know, like Spike Lee being in his movie. Oh, Spike. Tarantino will be in his movie. I mean, this is like, you know, it's not quite my movie, it's our movie, but I think it's kind of cool when you do it, like you shoot and direct, like being in there. But I always wonder who gets the camera when you're in the set, if you're the director. Well, we appreciate you going from behind the camera to Absolutely. here. Absolutely. We wasn't expecting it, so thank you. In the hot seat yeah. <laughs> with all of us. Yeah, 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 I'm here. It's a lot of chocolate going on. Okay, chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's dive into things, guys. I currently am experiencing a masterclass on the power of your words okay. and the influence of the media. And as former athletes, I'm sure that's something that you guys can relate to. Okay. I wanna take the approach today as the student. Mm -hmm. I'm the student and you are the teachers, okay? Like this is the classroom. Okay, master class. I like that, because yeah. she always wanted to be the boss and always yeah. wanted to, yeah. yeah. So I'm ready, like I'm ready to learn. They call me sensei, so. Yeah, sensei. Yeah. So as former athletes, can you guys speak to the importance of the media in your profession, but also how you figured out how to navigate that space? That's right. You should so, go first, because you started a media company. <laughs> Correct. And I started the media company because of how uh, they cover us. And it's athletes, celebrities, artists, everybody in between. And um, you have to protect your character, protect your name, and you have to control your narrative, right? And so as athletes, we're trained since we're babies pretty much. I was in a newspaper when I was seven, eight years old. So that process starts then. And then when you get to the big leagues, whether it's college and then to the NFL, we have 20, 30 men and women on the beat covering us every single day. And if you're the guy, or the lady, you're gonna have even more. And so we're naturally trained to block out both success and failure. They're both distractions. Well, 
the great the great ones, Marty, like, and you know this, bro, we seen men fall because they had a bad game and they didn't know how to respond to adversity. Or maybe they said the, the wrong thing or they did the wrong thing. And I've been there several times. And the ones that keep going is the ones that's able to sit there and say, I hear it, I hear it, but I know who I am and I'm still moving this forward. Or I course correct, damn, I made a mistake, so let me get back on track. Mm. So I think as athletes, you know, that's a big part of um, the whole process. Well, I was pushed back, that was the athlete at one time. But when social media became a thing, the athlete no longer had to be trained. Like they have access to the world from that moment. These kids has a million followers in 10th grade, 11th 11 grade seniors in high school. There's no media training for them. If they do, they need to start it younger because we speak directly to the media now. Right. No longer yeah. do you have to go to someone and have them write your story. We have been empowered to tell our own stories. And the thing is like, when you understand the power you have in your voice, when you tell your story, it's like, what is my story? And how do I want to tell my story? So then you have to develop a, a taste for language. Yeah. Mm. Like how am I using my words and which words fit better, sit better and hit better and the timing and the pacing That's of right. these things in conversation. So I think the media kind of uh, spectrum of it just kind of got, it's just dispersed. I could go tweet right now and be heard by three, 300,000 people, right? I could go do uh, Instagram and be heard by 10,000 people. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> but the thing is, but the problem is what happens too is like, so when we learn media, there was a, a barrier to the audience. Yeah. Right. If I go talk to a newspaper, they had to read the newspaper. But now when I talk, they can come talk directly, directly back to me back. in my Oof. comments and my DMs. They can hit me up. They can even email me. To, me. to me, that's the same thing though. Like, bruh, I don't even read the comments. Why? Because it's a distraction. But... Hold, hold on, hold on. I can hire somebody I do know, social media, Instagram, right? Like, you got to think about this. And this is what I'll say to you, Kayla. Like, you are now, you are now the prize. Before, it's like, okay, uh, Kayla, who's Kayla? Now, Kayla is Kayla. Kayla is her own enterprise. Kayla is her own entity. So now you are learning celebrity. Yeah. Like, we've been doing it since we were here, right? But, but now think about it. To your point to social media, you have to engage, you have to read DMs, you have to read comments. But when you're a celebrity, man, taking all that in, that could be detrimental. That could be tough for your mental health. You can hire somebody for that. I, I approach comments the same way I, I approach newspaper clippings. I don't read that shit. So that's cool. I understand you. But my thing is everybody else is reading it. This shapes the identity, the identity that you have. Everybody else will source it through the comments. This person said this, this person says that. That has influence on your belief of who I am. Yeah. But does it matter? Why do I care what they, what, that, what, because, I know who I am. Well, but can again, I, go ahead. Can I interject? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Because I think both things can be true. There's an extent to where the comments, likes, the dislikes don't matter. And you have to be a very mentally sound, tough person to be able to block out that noise. And I think as an athlete who's experienced that their whole life, it probably comes a little bit easier for you, second nature. And to your point, as someone who wears the title of influencer, there is a part of me that cares about how I'm influencing people mm -hmm. and what they think of me and what they have to say of me. So looking back on my decisions, even recently, sitting down and doing a podcast, I felt like, there were moments where I articulated myself in a really good way. And there were moments where if I could go back, I would maybe change the way that I said things because mm -hmm. it didn't fully embody my character or my mm -hmm. heart. But that's something that I'm learning, mm -hmm. right? As athletes, y'all have mastered that because you've done that your whole life. To a certain extent, I think that the Just biggest to... thing that you have to go through is you have to understand well, well, self-identity. Well, before, before, before we move forward there, uh, how are you feeling with that? Because that is a big moment. Because I've been on, been on shows before where it was like the gotcha moment where yeah. your team say, "Hey, we're going to stay off topic here. We're not going to dive into this." And then you get there and it's like, boom. Yeah. So that was just last week. How do you feel? I feel like I'm learning. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm trying to continue to have the courage to stand in my power, to be myself, to answer questions honestly and transparently. But I also think that media training and a little yeah. PR goes a long way because you don't have to answer every question. Like every comment or DM doesn't deserve a response. I'm learning that. Here's my question to you. I was gonna say this about 
do you feel like you're in a phase of self-discovery or do you know who you are? I mean, we're always in a, a form of self-discovery, but like we're just scoring, I'm diving deeper into who I am as an essence, but I know who I am. I'm I just know, getting to know myself better. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. I've done the work to figure out who I am. I think what I am discovering is the power of my words mm. and the power of my influence. I don't think that I was aware of that before. Right. Yeah. And you know my personality is... Um, spicy. Spicy. <laughs> it's <a> spicy. It's <laughs> spicy. And that can be perceived and received a million different ways. That's true. But that, but that's what I want to talk about, man. Marty, I, I feel like we may be on opposite ends of the spectrum here, but it's like when you know who you are, right, and especially when you have a platform and you get, you have thousands of people following you every single day. You are it. You are her right now. And you will always be, but from a media standpoint, all eyes on Kayla. And you have to be able to take the good with the bad and just continue to move forward. It doesn't matter what they say. It doesn't matter. You have to be strong. Think about all these other uh, athletes and celebrities, right, that they just talk, 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 and they just stand up there and they're just like, boom, I know who I am, they stay here. It doesn't mean it doesn't affect you, but you just gotta do that work, and then you also just have to grow into that. And I, I mean, I got there probably like 15 years ago. I, 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 Marty, I, I, I don't, I don't care, bro. I don't care because I know who I am. And there's times where I make mistakes for sure. But it's like, all right, let me get back on track. And it's hard when it's like, dun 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 Brandon Marshall arrested. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you feel me? It's like, I was there. I got the phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, We're that's messed perfect. up. <laughs> None of us are <laughs> I've never been arrested. Me either. Okay. <laughs> you only got one criminal, <laughs> criminal, criminal on the set. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Why would he do it like that? That's crazy. I almost got arrested one time. I was at PetSmart. Right? And... Before you share this story... <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just letting you know, this is, this is me. Before you share this story, and although it's your truth, make sure that you want to share this story with the Oh, yeah, yo, yo, yeah, you right. You All right, right now. I'm a vet, baby. Go ahead, my you know brother. Hey. Go ahead, my brother. So, I'm at PetSmart. At this time, uh, what I used to do, my daughter was really, Jet was really into unicorns. So I used to take cupcakes and hide them in the backyard and be like, there's unicorn poop and we'll go find them and she'll eat the cupcakes. And I'd be like, oh, you eat unicorn poop. And like, ah, oh, it's so good, right? Like a whole daddy thing. Okay. And one day she's getting ready, I'm getting ready to get her a goldfish. You know, it's like, okay, you three, goldfish time. You know what I'm saying? Like, so we go to PetSmart and we were looking at the goldfish and she sees the parrots and the parakeets and all these other animals. And she goes, dad, do you think they got unicorns? I'm like, shit, okay, before I could do it, this old white dude said, ain't no such thing as unicorns. I was like, motherfucker, in my house, that's motherfucking <laughs> unicorns. <laughs> Don't you ever come tell my daughter ain't no unicorn. That's like you gonna tell my daughter ain't no magic in the world. Right, right, Don't right. fuck with my kid. <laughs> Baby, there's unicorns. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> and all our unicorns are black. Black <laughs> unicorns. Black right? Unicorns. Let's not get it twisted. All <laughs> my unicorns are black, and there's a lot of unicorns out there, and you can have a unicorn. And his daughter, his daughter was like, probably like 15, 16. She's like, Dad, why would you say that to her? So then I wrote the book, There's a Unicorn in My Backyard. Mm. So that every kid in the world, talking about the power of messaging, that every kid could know that there was possibility, yeah. there's a possibility of magic being in your backyard. Yeah. And that's why I wrote that children's book. Right. That's good. That's powerful, bro. And like you said, the power of platform. Um, and that's what we're talking about here. Four foot inches, get an opportunity to go deeper. And I don't have uh, too much to say here. I think, Marty, you asked a powerful question. Are you in self-discovery or do you know who you are? Right. And um, I think you know who you are. Well, I know you know who you are. You already said that. But now it's like God has put you in position. Uh, he's elevating you. And with that, it comes a lot of changes. And so I'm thankful to partner with you on this platform. I've been doing it uh, independently for five years now, and I've worked with a lot of people. You're an awesome teammate. You're amazing. And I think you are the key to everything that I want to do moving forward. Wow, thank you. Yeah, and so with that comes a lot of responsibility and you navigating through that, like, damn, I, they really are listening to me. Mm. They really do admire me. They appreciate you. And here's the other thing here. And I'll say this, right? Like, I went through a big breakup. 
right? I we went know. A big breakup we read the a paper. That's right. So I went through. A, I, I was there. there. Yeah, right. I got the call. <laughs> so I went through a big breakup, <laughs> so and what helped me continue to move forward because afterwards that year, the platform actually outperformed the previous two. And what I understood was there's 320 million Americans, give or take a few. And when you look at the comments, it feels like the majority is the ones that are negative, right? But the reality is not. Like, so, so many people rock with you. Look at our comments. I am athlete. I agree. Everybody's fire, fire. Kayla's amazing. Kayla's that. But when you read the comments, this is why I say don't read the comments. It's because when you read the comments, the, most of the people who's in there to have time to do that, they're trolls. And they're going to say something negative. And then you think like, oh, my goodness, this is the perception. This is how everybody feels. And the reality is you got you about to have a million followers probably by the end of this year. And those million people chose to follow you because they admire you. They appreciate you. and They love you. And so that's why I don't read that stuff. Man. I agree. I think social media landscape is tough to navigate sometimes. There was a point in my life and career where I did respond to comments and I did respond to those DMs and nasty too. Like I'm talking about your mama and your kids. Mm -hmm. That's what I used to do. Now, I don't read them. I don't even, I don't even so much as delete them. <laughs> I, I let it even more powerful. Because yes, delete. it's only relevant if you give it energy. That's right. You, you can't you can't give it any energy. It's all words. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Words have absolutely. no power until we give power to them. Absolutely. I tell this all the time because one day I just tell you, my daughter was on the playground, and my wife was Siggy. She was very embarrassed because she went to go pick up Jet, and my little sister at the time was living with me, Ashley, and oh, Ashley's Ashley. afraid of bugs. Like she just, I think it's like my girl. You like ten feet tall. Are you gonna be scared of bugs? But then Jet picked it up from Jet, from Ashley. But one day Siggy go pick Jet up and just on the playground and there's a beetle and she's the big beetles or whatever is running from her. And she goes, it's a motherfucking beetle. It's a motherfucking beetle. Jet did it? Yeah. And start, ah! <laughs> so, <laughs> now I'm just telling you like, right? Influence, right? My, my, my sister's influencing my daughter. Right. Right? But, you know, so my wife's like, I can't believe she said that she's in trouble. So I was like, all right, when I get home, I'll sit down and talk to Jet about the power of words. Yes. Motherfucker's not a bad word. Like, if I raised kids on the, if I groomed dogs and I had dogs on the farm and I was like, go get the bitch, you'll go get the bitch, which is the female dog. And if you came to school and be like, we got bitches at the house, then right? It's a different conversation. It's a different conversation. Context. Right? right? So context is context important, right? Is so, so important. Same, same, yeah, con oh, context is so important, here. Lord Jesus. So context is important. That's, a, that's my whole point, right? Rather than 15 second clips right, when exactly. there's an hour long right. conversation. Right. Because now you're. Because, context because is now important. imagine if this kid is at school and they be like, oh, bitches are outside. They look out the fence of the playground and be like, look yeah. at all the bitches. Yeah. And yeah. the teacher be like, come here. And they reprimand the kid and take him to the, the, uh, to the principal office for saying the bitches are outside. Well, in fact, the bitches were outside. And I say this because like when I talked to my daughter that night, you know, sitting down, I had to give her some ice cream and I always think about that scene in like Men in Black when Tommy Lee Jones was talking to um, Will Smith before he became a part of the Men in Black. So I give my daughter ice cream and we talking about this. I was like, so what happened at school? She's like, oh daddy, I don't want to say it. I was like, what'd you say? She said, I said, it's a motherfucking beetle. And I was like, okay, okay. Well, first thing I'm gonna say, you used it right. <laughs> right. That's the perfect timing, perfect, perfect timing, perfect way to use the word motherfucker, right? She had the perfect pace. But not the pace, tone, mm. everything. You hit it. Mm. I'm proud of you. <laughs> but let's not do it right here on this playground in this place right yeah, here. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. There'll be time when me and you, daddy, are outside, and I'm gonna be like, hey. It's a motherfucking beetle. And I want you to say it with me. But time and a place. Because I don't want to teach my daughter that there's a such thing as bad words. Mm. Because I don't want to limit her vocabulary. Because any word could be bad. Yeah. My thing is to help teach her how to use the language yeah. so that she can empower herself to tell whatever stories that you want to tell. I'm, we're a writing family. My wife went to school with Sarah Lawrence, got a degree in writing. I write all the time, and my daughter's a writer. So language is big in our household. Mm. And context is, a, is big when we tell about these stories mm. as well. So it's like a lot of people think about the, the other issue is America can't read. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hell. <laughs> right now, in, like, the literacy rate in America is terrible. 75% of black boys by the fourth grade aren't up to reading level. Wow. I didn't know that. That's crazy. That is. Right? So, like, you think about reading. Reading is like, you can't make it through life. You could get by without knowing math. You could get a calculator. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> right? But if you can't read or comprehend, then how can you make it and navigate through life? Why is that so powerful, like reading? Well, I like, you well, know what I mean? Look, you say the statistics because statistics show it. So there's multiple reasons. There's multiple reasons. down to other areas of life. 100%. One is the prison system. Right, so like the prison system is interesting because you got it's like a hotel. You gotta be able to tell how many people are gonna be in prison at a certain period of time in order to keep the rooms filled because it's, it's for profit. The n- number one way, one of the number one ways, ways of telling that is how many kids are up to grade reading level by the fourth grade. If right. 75% of black boys aren't up to reading level in fourth grade, how many black boys are actually in prison right now? Yeah. yeah. Right, the other thing too, books are windows to the world, right? If you can't read, you can't learn, right? Readers are leaders. I know I sound like a teacher up here on that. This is not the thing, but I just think yes, about sensei. comments and context <laughs> and sensei. being able to interpret what someone is saying because yeah. now they have issues with kids going to college right now because they never read full books. They just get the text what they need. They only read what they need and hear what they want to hear, right. but they never read full novels anymore. Yeah. So you can't really comprehend at the level that you need to comprehend that because you can't even read between the lines. Mm. That's good. That's so good. that's why that's why I thought about the comments. I realized that people can't read. And one reason I know people can't read too, because they be like, hey, where can I get this? You be like, I just wrote it in the bio. <laughs> or my other thing that upset me too, when people say, I ain't reading all that. That just shows you the appetite for reading. That's right. Mm. Right? Because they don't really want to know. But but then think about this and, and we'll do this. We'll go around, we'll all give you know, some inspiration to people out there and then we'll land the plane here. But we spend all this time performing for other people, right? Writing, creating content, and we let how they interpret it or respond to it, we let, we, we let them dictate how we live our life. Am I saying that correctly? Are I don't you? know what you're trying to say. It's your language. So let me back up here. Depending on how people respond to what we put out in the world a lot of times determine how we operate and how we function mm, I can you see know that. and how we feel mm-hmm. and you actually have the key like you broke through it's like I'm going to create because I love creating and I'm going to do this because I love it and if you like it good if you don't it doesn't matter and so we'll go around all right, I'll go, and then you go, Marty, and then Kayla, you get in the plane, but we'll all put something out there um, that people can take away. For me, it's know who you are and understand that there's going to be good and there's going to be bad, and you got to deal with it both. Success and failure are both distractions. As long as you know who you are and you're developing, that's the only thing that matters comments, the newspaper clippings, it doesn't matter. You can learn a lot from professional athletes. Every single day, Dak Prescott or even Deshaun in his situation you gotta show up to work and do it, try to do the best job. Yeah, but 37 massage the therapists in one season is wild. Okay, now we're not going there. That many that. People. We're not saying, going there. Like, that's a lot of dudes. I only mean, like, one person worked on me for my entire career because they knew my body. 37 different hands. Like, Cut the tape. Bro, that's 74 hands touching you. Like, you don't know how I like my hamstring rub. Oh, you don't hell. have my injury. We were like, doing so good. I'm we were saying, almost at the finish line. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's... Hell no. Nah. All right, why don't you give those... So, what do you, do you have anything for anybody? Closing yeah. remarks? Yeah, closing remarks. I think that... <laughs> saying, that like, it's crazy. I would love to take a page out of Marshawn Lynch's book. Mm-hmm. I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> Every question doesn't require an answer. Yeah, that's good. You don't have to give energy to everything that's being thrown at you. And I think it's really important, too, to just continue to encourage people in the public eye, whether they're athletes, celebrities, influencers, hosts, to have the courage to be disliked, have the strength to be your authentic self, and think before you speak. Yeah, that's good. There's actually a book called the, 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 Have the Courage to Be Disliked. Really? Yeah, I have it in my library. I would love to read it. I will it. send it to you. I, I love, love being in the library. I, hey, yes. I love, like, I saw Beauty and the Beast ever since I was a kid. I was like, I want more books than that the Beast had. Yeah, me too. The I'm the a beast, reader, The Beast even knew the, the, the power in books. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So I will go. Um, go back on one thing that you said. I think as for me as a creative, I think that one thing that is important, I think when you make something, you want people to love it. 
you mm-hmm. want people to like it. You put a lot into it. So like when we release the creativity, it's the deepest part of ourselves. We're revealing ourselves in a different way than we would just the facade of what you see. Like I'm telling you my deepest thoughts, my, like my ideas. Sharing your ideas with somebody is a form of intimacy. We don't even do that. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like my deepest ideas, my biggest ideas, you can't, like that's fragile. Who you take that to first mm. can change the whole landscape of what that idea becomes. Like what do you do with an idea? Who do you take an idea to? Right, and I would say that so like, and everything that a human being enjoys is the result of another human being's creativity. Right, mm-hmm. like I say this all the time, God made apples, he didn't make apple pie. You know what I'm saying? That was the imagination. Someone then somebody else said, "Ooh, apple pie. You know what? I'm gonna make an apple turnover." Then another dude came by and said, "You know what? Apple cider." And then some dude was like, "Ooh, it's hot out here. Apple juice." <laughs> so no, you know what I'm saying? But you think about that. Like like we all we doing is iterating on the imaginations that came before us. Yeah. Right. So your whole thing is like, well, we're telling you the information that we're sharing with you so that you can iterate on the things that we experienced before you. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's not like I don't think of it in a way of like I have the answers because I don't know. I run for I don't want fame. I don't want people bothering my wife. I don't want people bothering my daughter. I don't want to be seen. I want my characters to be famous. Mm-hmm. Right. I want you to know my work. But me personally, that's a part mm-hmm. of me that people will never I will never give the public. But I think the problem with the social media is you feel like you give, you reveal too much of yourself mm. to them. I reserve a huge chunk of myself for my close loved ones. That's a that's a Martell is that only my wife knows. Oh. You know? Yeah. Only my daughter knows. Only my brother. So I think part of it is like why is that why is that making you so emotional thinking about that or saying that? Cuz if you First of all, I'm an emotional dude. But I also love the people that I love. Mm -hmm. But everyone doesn't deserve every part of you. You got to protect you. Mm. Only give that. Don't give that away. Mm. You don't deserve that part of me. This is the part of me. And I think that's the difference between if you build your following through social media, it feels like they know all of you. When they don't know all of you, I'm telling you right now that there's there's like versions of me that no one knows. Oh, I say that, but now the, this segment just started the power of media and platform, and so it's okay. You understand what I'm saying, though? No, but one hundred percent. Yeah, because it's like like right, I'm just oh, we just finished elaborating. What, what what what's coming up for you right now? I'm learning that. I think it's in my nature to be myself and to lead with myself and to give all of myself and people don't deserve that. That's right. Because it's not going to always be received in the intent that I mean for it to be received. I don't have control over public perception. Brother, hold on, hold on. I know you, but brother, you just, I'm holding back my tears. I should let them out, but you just started this segment. We just spent 25 minutes talking and you being vulnerable got us here. And the way you live your life now, all of us need to take note. And that's, that's including Instagram, TikTok, et cetera, et cetera. We feel because we're in this new digital age that we have to share everything. We have to be authentic. We have to be organic. And the reality is the world is, it can be a nasty place. Is it filled with good people? Absolutely. But the world is a nasty place and we have to be very careful what we put out there. I had it up. Thank you. Nah, that's like, for me, I think it's like important if I see, you know, like being a parent. Tissue? Being a parent at this age, like, you know, I have a 10 year old daughter, right? And like, that's just crazy. I can put Kayla in that situation. <laughs> that's right. 100%. I have sisters. And, and but, but even, but even my but, daughter goes through this. And, and what did you right say? Now, but what did you yeah. say when we first? Everything we we do is so intentional. The campaign, the revival. It was you that said we gotta p- protect Kayla. You said put her in the middle. One hundred percent. Because when I see her, I see my wife, my daughter, my mom. That's right. Every black woman I know. That's right. That's right. So yeah, so yeah, I'm protective. I'm protective over 
including all the women in my life, all the men in my life. My biggest protector is my wife. Thank you. So I know what it might feel like to be navigating. Sorry. I'm good with my tear. I stand low. <laughs> I love you so much. <laughs> I know what it is to like navigate this space and feel okay. and feel lonely or feel like, you know, or have a million people and not know if who cares about a million people is really two, three, four, five people in your life. And that you're lucky to have, that you right. could call, count on the million. What the fuck about the million? Mm-hmm. Give after, me five. Like, after the podcast came out, I thought that I handled things with grace. I thought that I answered the questions to the best of my ability. The public had their interpretation of things. Didn't matter to me. My mom calls me though. And it's those conversations, like you said, Mm -hmm. that's what matters to me because she's offended. She's hurt by the way people are perceiving her daughter. She's Mm -hmm. hurt at the the negative headlines and the way that people are spinning it. And even my mom was like, maybe next time, (laughs) maybe next time we just, we don't answer those questions. And it's as simple as that. Don't give it any energy. You don't have to always respond. And I've been, I've been on that soapbox for a long time. Well, I don't have to always respond. Yeah, but let me ask you this question. How many times have you had press conferences? How many times Never. have you been on podcasts? I can count on one hand. Exactly. We've been doing this our whole life. Yeah. We had, we, in real time, we failed. Yeah. Either it's Tom Brady, LeBron, everybody, maybe not LeBron. LeBron just seems to do no bad. <laughs> I'm good. So you got a lot of skeletons. And yeah, we all do. Yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying to you is this. No, I think like, I got the skeleton. <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying. I'm good, baby. Is baby, uh, Marty. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you know, you have to give yourself grace because you know who you are, and this new platform, celebrity, and all this amazing energy that's around you is going to come with that. And so then now you know, right? And then we all can look at you and then people out there can be like, damn, if, when I get into that position, yeah, how am I going to do that? Because I, I said like, all right, we're going to, we're going to stay away from this. But then it was thrown out there. And now you're like, oh, what do I do? Good. There, let me tell you what seasoned people do. They get up and walk away. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you what seasoned people do. They say, Ah, I, I'm not going to answer that, right? But you're trying to be nice. You're trying to figure it out in real time. That's hard. That's hard. So yeah. I, I actually like a. I'm proud of you. Thank this, you. This you're yeah. This is the last thing I would say because this is like fourth and really long. <laughs> and um, <laughs> but this is the thing I would say like. I spent a lot of time in my garden. Well, I don't have my garden right now, but when I had my garden, I was a lot of time in my garden. I had to move my studio, so I'm in between gardens. And the one thing that was really interesting is like, if you plant a seed, right? Everybody like plant these seeds and like something would grow. But the problem, the thing that no one really tells you is how much you have to work the soil around the seed, right? How much you gotta tend to it. You gotta pull the weed, protect the seed, water it you know, come back to nurture the seed. We had to spend so much time nurturing the seed. The interesting thing is though, it takes so much imagination and faith because you don't know if that seed is gonna grow. You don't know what's gonna come. All you think you could trust is the process, hmm. tending to it, protecting it, watering it, doing what you can for the seed. And the crazy thing about flowers is you can't tell them when to bloom, right? And I say this because as you plant all these different seeds in your life, there's gonna be more time. This is just tilling to the soil right? Pulling the weeds. These are weeds. You're going to have to deal with it. You're going to deal with it. And then one day it's just going to, the seed is going to emerge from the dirt, turn into a flower, right? But we have to do that over and over and over and over again, every single seed that we plant. So as you continue to plant these seeds in your life, they're going to bloom in seasons. Yeah. But sometimes we got to realize that the season we are in is tending to the soil and the tending to the soil is where we are made into better people. Yeah. So I don't know if that had to do anything, no, but I, like, I just think about the soil. That. Yeah. Okay, cool. And all y'all out there that's watching uh, this special with myself, Kayla, Nicole, and Martellus Bennett, special guests, um, make sure you put in your scene in good soil, right? Uh, you can always make the soil better, better too. Matthew 13. Yeah. 
Or you can just go and George Washington Carver. Yeah. Can you, can you land us? Like, can, you, can you get us out of here? Can you get us out of here? That's one of the things. What's wrong? What are the extra long? <laughs> Real conversations all the time. Thank you guys for joining us. Yeah. So beautiful. Bring it in. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. It was good. Yeah. Tons of headlines swirling around the NFL this week, but we want to know what's real and what's cat. Mm. Brandon, if mm. I told you that Lamar is the MVP of the NFL just after six weeks, you calling that cat or fact? Fact, 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 fact. And Lamar Jackson, welcome to a very distinguished group. There's only been five gentlemen to ever go back to back when it comes to the MVP. That's Brett Favre staying in Green Bay. That's Aaron Rodgers. That's Peyton Manning. That's Joe Montana. And that's the yeah. great late Jim Brown. Yeah. And Lamar Jackson became, he morphed into a whole nother space. When he was on the plane after a win and, and Marlon Humphreys tried to go live and he said, bruh, he checked him on some Pompano stuff. Yeah. Right? That was Pompano <laughs> Lamar. Right. He was like, bruh, nah. Chill out. And that showed that Lamar ain't even worrying about the MVP, worrying about Super Bowl. So it's fact, 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 fact. That's facts. a lot of facts. Fact. Big facts. Big facts. Big, Big facts. facts. <laughs> okay, this guy has been handling business down in Washington. Josh, I want to know, if I said that Jaden Daniels is the best QB in the NFC East, is that fact or cap? That's a fact. All right. It's a fact, man. We ain't seen a rookie do this in a long time. He's having to put on a great rookie showcase. Um, Eagles banged up. We know that. But as of right now, yes. Got to wait to see what the Eagles do, see what Jaden Hurts do, because these are the ones that matter. The ones that's coming up. The ones that was it, yeah, okay. Slow roll the minute. Now we need to see what you can do, Jaden. Mm -hmm. I mean, not Jaden. Rewind that, y'all. Start over. Just pick it up right there. Pick All right. Up. Now we need to see what you can do, uh, Jaden Daniels. So what I would say, I would say facts. He's the best quarterback. He put on the best showcase. He's doing his thing. So now you're saying just in the moment or overall? Because if you were general manager and you had these four quarterbacks in this division, you still you taking him number one, or are you just saying he's just hot right now? He hot right now. Okay. He hot okay. right now. I gotta wait to see. It's a okay. full season. Okay. It's full okay. season. Okay. All okay, right. Mike. Next up, C.J. Stroud is a top three QB in the loaded AFC. Is that a fact? Is that a little cat? Major facts. Okay. My dog was not only the rookie of the year last year, he was the fifth quarterback, rookie quarterback in NFL history to throw for over 4,000 yards. Mm -hmm. Now, normally, that follows up with a sophomore slump. Mm -hmm. My dog having a sophomore jump. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I like that. He's sixth in the NFL in passing yards. Yeah. He's top fifth in the NFL for passing touchdowns. Yeah. And not only that, his team is five and one. Yeah, mm. winning. So, outside of Patty Mahomes, of course, mm -hmm. and Lamar Action Jackson, yeah. I'm taking C.J. Stroud. Mm. I like that. I like that. Brandon, the Steelers, they are better off with Fields than Russ at QB. Is that fact <laughs> or cap? Uh, I'm laughing here because everybody know that Russ is my guy. Why would our producers put me in this position? <laughs> uh, but the reality is this. Right now, it's fact. Mm. This is the business, mm -hmm. right? Russ was the guy. They said, you QB one. He pulled his uh, calf, right? Boom, now another man gets that opportunity, mm -hmm. and he's done a great job, and I'm proud of Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. But here's the reality. Through these first six weeks of the season, you look at the defenses he's gone against and what they're doing on the offense, very vanilla, mm -hmm. right? We're talking about 8, 28th ranked defense, 17th, you know, 27th, et cetera, et cetera. So now getting into it, we'll see if it changed. But right now, this is fact. Mm -hmm. And it sucks for a player like Russ because he came in saying, I'm the guy, and, and they said that you were the guy. But when you get to the other side of your career, right, they start, Yeah. what have you done for me lately? Mm -hmm. yeah. So right now it's fact, but it could change really quickly here soon when you get into the, the middle of the season. So it's fact right now, but it could change quickly. Mm -hmm. And what we say, Come November, December is when the real season starts. That's when you start. So great job, Justin Fields. Continue to do a great job. But Russell Wilson's right there, and this could easily be thrown right back to him. But it's a great job by Russell Wilson keeping all the negative stuff out the way and being a true mentor. That's right. 
that's why they're having success. That's because right. he's being a mentor, he's not being a negative guy. You know, you see these situations happen all the time, and a dude being the backup, like, oh, well, I suppose. No, he's not being entitled. Yeah. He's just going in, and, he, and he's helping a young quarterback succeed. And, and, and this is the tough spot for me, right? Because you, this why you can't have certain conversations just on those other channels, linear channels, because there's so much to it. And as a player, Justin feels you want him to take advantage of this opportunity. Mm -hmm. But then when you've built relationships and you have guys like Russell Wilson, it's like, nah, not even take Russell Wilson out of it. We know looking at it where it's, all right, y'all ain't really played too many, pe uh, some tough talent right now. When you get into the meat of this season, November, December, when it starts, now that's when you want that experience to come out, right? So we'll see if uh, Justin can hold it down. Let's keep it moving, guys. Josh, <laughs> the Browns should bench Deshaun Watson immediately. Is that fact or cap? Mm. It's a fact, but it's cap at the same time. Mm. Because we gave him too much money to bench him. If I'm a GM, you gonna earn every dollar. I don't care if we lose every game. You gonna play. You gonna That's play real. every down. That's real. You gotta play, but we gave you too much money. Too much money, and at the same time, we got to think about it. Deshaun Watson didn't get paid for what he about to do. We all know that you get paid for what you've done, mm -hmm. not what you about to do. So Deshaun Jackson got, Deshaun Watson, <laughs> got all that money for what he did, not about for what he's about to do. So he we need a just, fresh start. He need a fresh start. He does. He need a fresh start. He does. Uh, you know, and that's, that's the situation sometimes. And then, look, I'm not going to drag this conversation out, right, because this is, Factor cap, right, and we got to move it. But this offense was built to run the run the ball, and it, when you look at Deshaun Watson, what he did successfully down in Houston, mm -hmm. he was in the shotgun and he was in spread, mm -hmm. right. And so sometimes we go out there, we make these moves, and then we put our players in terrible situations. So the problem is between uh, uh, Kevin Stefans, uh, Kevin Stef to Stef how you say it? Stefanski. How you say his name? Kevin what? Stefanski. We'll call him Stefanski. Kevin. Stefanski. How you say it? Nobody knows? Okay, on a sports show? All right, so now you got the, the real problem is between your quarterback and the head coach. Head coach is a really an offensive coordinator. That's mm -hmm. his claim to fame. And they're not on the same page, and that trickles down to the win-loss column. So the answer is, do you think it's the system, or do you think it's the quarterback? The system is great. That's the system I came in. That's the Shanahan system. Mm -hmm. That's run. That's stretch right, stretch left. But now when you bring, go get your quarterback, they was mm -hmm. desperate. They saw Deshaun out there mm -hmm. in that vulnerable situation, and now you bring a guy that was in spread and shotgun, and you're trying to put him in that. That's not yeah. what he does. Two quick mm -hmm. things, two quick things. So Things. One thing, if, if we if we talking about a running offense, we missing their running back. Nick yeah. Chubb has been out. Facts. All right, so that's a big loss. That's one of the best running backs in the league. And also, I seen something. Deshaun Watson hasn't had a third down conversion Shh. in 25 yeah. drives. No, so that's how not, could no, we blame the coach? No, that. we can fact check that because I saw that too. How can we blame the coach? You at least scramble for a first. Well, I, I will say this though, Mike. I will say this: when you are paid that much money, you su you're supposed to be good enough to overcome some of those challenges, right? Exactly. So, you know, right. but if not you, everything. If you're getting paid twenty two hundred and thirty million guaranteed, you got to be a playmaker. Mm. You got to make something shake. You got to make something out of nothing. Playmakers make most of the plays they're supposed to and some of the plays they're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. yeah. Speaking of playmakers, Mike, Caleb Williams is already the best QB in Bears history. Mm. Is that a fact or a cap? That's cap. Um, I can't crown him yet. He will be mm. the best quarterback in Bears history. Um, they're on a three-game winning streak, but they played part of the three worst teams in the NFL these last three games. They played the Jacksonville Jaguars. They played the Carolina Panthers, and then they played the LA Rams. Mm -hmm. uh, outside of Cleveland, and I think it's another one, one in five team. Those are the five worst franchises right now currently. Uh, so he hasn't done enough. He, had a, he don't have a win to hang his hat on yet. Mm -hmm. But with the playmaking ability he showed, he definitely will be. I, I, I like that, and I agree with you there, Mike. Um, I look at things outside of just the physical attributes and those, those traits. Mm -hmm. There was a moment in Hard Knocks where uh, – Caleb Williams broke down the huddle. And what happened was, uh, and it was a special moment because he's a rookie and no one gave him that, that crown yet. You're a leader, lead us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so he was quiet all training camp. He was quiet all offseason. He was playing his role. And then he came in on this one particular day and said, no, let me break it down. And then he said, yo, the, the, the locker room is trash. And these men and women that come clean up after us, they don't need, like, mm -hmm. that shouldn't be like yeah. that, mm -hmm. right? 
And so when he did that, he gained the respect of that locker room and also me yeah. because think about that. Mm -hmm. I'm quiet. I'm, I'm playing my role, but then I'm coming in the lead and that's 80% of it. Mm -hmm. So we know he can do everything physically and now he has the, the, the leadership skills. It's going to be special to see what he morphs into over the next couple of years. Absolutely. That is Fact or Cap presented by Vivid Seats. Make sure that you download the Vivid Seats app right now and earn rewards on all your tickets. Cap. Cap. A whole lot of cap around. <laughs> cap. Cap. B Marshall here checking in with my main man, Cliff, from Healthy MD. One of the things that you guys need to know is I played for the Jets and Giants. And Healthy MD is right in Jersey where the Jets and Giants are housed. Yes, sir. Free health care if you're in Jersey. Yes, sir. Free health care services in the underserved community in New Jersey, Florida, and Georgia right now. We're running in every city for mental health. We're giving away free mental health care for the underserved community. With every run we do, $10,000 to free health care. Yeah. Y'all know what time it is. This is Game Fits. No more X's and O's. We're talking about the yeses and no's. And first up this week is Marco Wilson of the Patriots. Mm. Whoa. Okay, Marco. Yes, yes. Who'd you say this was? Marco. Who's Marco? Polo. I don't Polo. Know. Well, we found them. <laughs> Marco Polo, we found them. He hit. Uh, I'm so excited to hear your opinion here, Maya, because you can get into the details here. Yeah. But, like, this is phenomenal i'm with you on that like this is a supreme fur coat with his brand hip happiness is priority it's his own brand that he's launched so he's put that together nice i like this bezo hey man anytime a brother got their own stuff man i can't go against it man i'm feeling the drip man he went teddy graham on me he went teddy graham on me but i'm all right i like the brown i like the brown brother would you wear it for me I, I wear the jacket, I, I don't know. Is the pants, is the fur on the pants? And then with the, also, on the shoes. Before, before you move on, Kayla, I also like whatever this is, it's not a clear shot, but you can see there's a, some type of flats. And I even like that. I even like what he's doing down there. This is a freaking big yes for me. Yeah. Big I agree. I think this is some elevated streetwear, iconic fashion moment. I love when guys really take it there. I could see someone, you know, wearing this for Halloween, you know what I mean? Like these iconic sports moments. People will recreate this. What you Halloween, Halloween though? Oh, okay, we're not talking about Halloween no more. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's cool, yes, <laughs> Next up, we've got Brown's defensive star, Jeremiah Owusu Kormwa. Let's see. Mm. The man look like Uncle wow. Charlie. <laughs> like Charlie Wilson? Last name Wilson. Right. There's no way he did that. That gotta be Versace pajamas. That's the only way he's getting away with the fit. I My, it's custom. I think it's a custom made suit. I mean, I can see he's got some red. No. It's like some gators. It's like some gators. gators. Like it looked like some cowboy gators, uh, and those are custom. Maya, you can get into this more than I can, but this shows how one piece can throw everything off. If you take off the overcoat, he actually wins here. Well, well maybe tweak the hat too. Tweet me out on pajamas. <laughs> but, 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 don't, but, 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 look at it though. But, I you know, vision he caught pajama suit with green gators. <laughs> There's no way we doing that. I ain't even seen you do that. You ain't doing that. So that's a clear no. What are we thinking? It's a no. It's a no for you as well for me. I, I do like the wrist that he took, but yeah, the coat, it doesn't go. Can't do that. You close though. You close. Stay in your pocket. Tweak a few things and you right there. I like what he's doing though. I like what he's doing, but it's a big no right now. He got to figure it out. I believe his signature this season was wearing ethnic garb. So I think that's where the peacock vibe is coming in. The African going black ain't all yes. black, man. I'm saying, <laughs> okay. Hey man, more power to the brother, man. I just found out that's the African dude, man. And more power to the brother, man. I was with a brother, man. That's the African brother, man. Hey, hey, it don't matter what he got on, man. I like it's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, he took a risk. He took a risk, kid. Next up, we've got Jags. Uh, just for further uh, information, those are not peacock. It's actually like a, a print of like his family and something. Oh, well, let's go back, y'all. We gotta go oh, back. We don't know his face. No, keep rolling. Ain't gonna keep rolling. No, we ain't gonna go back, Marty. What? You no, know, because he's like. Yeah. What well, that's the we ain't know so that what's the face in there? Well, I can't see there's a face in there. Yeah, you got a, a so, face. A family crest. Yeah. So, but even think about this, Kayla, what Marty is saying to us. Marty is saying that this is not Peacock and this is families inside. So why would you distract us with the overcoat and the hat when that is the piece? Okay, let's add the note. I think this is an important note that he has included what seems like maybe a family crest in the detail of this look. So although 
at first glance it's doing a lot there is some meaning to it it's a lot more going on it's a conversation a starter <laughs> it's a lot more going on you got the family portraits in mm. the peacock cool. feathers yeah it still don't to make it just okay that's beautiful statement it's still a no yeah, yeah it's, like, it's, it's still a no it's a nut. <laughs> you distracted us with the other stuff yeah it's yes. too much the too much. hot the hot too yeah. But I like what you're doing, though. That's what Future Doom called too much sauce. Oh, okay. <laughs> too much sauce. <laughs> That's too much sauce. <laughs> Next up, Jack tied in Evan Ingram arriving in London. Mm. You see? Hey, Evan. Ooh, yes, sir. I like this. Yes. The, hey, listen. This is my, I look up to this. I look up to him. This is my idol right here. If I could be anything in fashion, it would be right here. This would be the picture. Mm -hmm. I think he nailed it. The minimalist approach, the black. The gray, even the glasses. Look at the glasses. Yeah. I may have tweaked the bag. If I'm if I'm gonna be a stickler, I may have tweaked the bag a little bit. I don't think you need the patterns with this. So that's right. a yes from Brandon. It's a big yes. I like the belt. That's a great detail. Do I like the coat? Mm, it's a bit boring. I, I don't see what? enough. I don't see the enough cut? personality Why here. Cut? Why are you? Why can you say you of all people say no to this? Are you kidding me? I don't like it with the oh brown neck here. It's it's mm. the body. Yeah, yeah. Something's off about it. Pops. Yeah. What it's other low. chest yeah. side? Yeah. Like he ain't trying to what is called when the cleavage. The cleavage eye. He got the cleavage eye. Wow. So this is another said out for both of y'all. He looked like the dude, he looked like the dude that was chasing the Terminator, that that podium dude. <laughs> he still look like him. Come on, man. He's looking at that photo. Okay, well, I'm down with you get. Terminator, oh, man. This is a yes for me. I think it's clean. I do agree with you. The neckline on the T is working against the line of the coat. But I give it a yes. And then also what Kayla always say, Taylor. she got on Taylor. Look at that. She got on my coat when I was in London, my little Burberry. Look at that. I love it. And is the link good for you, to Kayla? It's good, right at the knee. Perfect. It's a big yes. Y'all tripping over there on this, so okay. Now, where's coroner Jalen Johnson over in London? I ain't gonna Ooh. lie. Okay. Out of bears, that's my team. Wow. And Jalen, he one of the guys. But Jalen, I ain't gonna lie. We can't go with the ones. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do the ones. One. I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling the bag. I like the shoes. I even like the shirt, but just the, the ones. You, you can't get past that. Like I, I, everything else is cool. We just should have put some pants. Fire. <laughs> 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 I've been seeing a lot of formal streetwear. That's now a trend. So I think he's trying to, you know, the shirt, the tie, LV shoes down here. I like that. But yeah, you're right. They're a bit too short. Like, Maya, you talk about the trends all the time and you really into this fashion thing. Let me ask you this, is this doing too much, right? Like for those out there that's trying to tap in and find their lane in fashion, you got the Prada, you got the LV, you got the Goyard and you got the LV uh, yeah. shoes right there. Uh, penny loafers. It's too like, much. Is that too much? Yes. That's it's too busy. much. It's too it's much. much. It's busy. I would have. I would have changed the bag. I would have changed the bag for sure. It's like wearing <laughs> Nikes and Adidas. Like you're not gonna do that. That's crazy. You can't with whoa, the whoa, Nikes whoa. fusion and Adidas sneakers. Wait, 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 wait. What you? Wait, 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 wait. I'm with you on that. Future Ben told me we could mismatch designers. But it doesn't have to say it's the designer. How about let's do an all black product tie without the LV on the tie. I can. It can be more subtle flex of your designer pieces. I'm about to go work for the black Willy Wonka. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he might be going to Willy Wonka and, and, and look, he just wants some attention. But what I would have done here, and maybe he can run his look back because there's something here, maybe go all the way down. Go all the way down. That would have been yeah. cool. Change the bag. In. I like it. I don't like it. I pass, but. Stay in the lane. You put that on, boy. Hey, I do it. My you will be busting out the rapper. Okay? <laughs> and I got a thump. Look at that. I got a thump, boy. Pause. That's a pause? You, why y'all not? Why y'all not? Why y'all not? You and that child. You and that mob. You and that mob. You and that mob. You and that mob. I'm saying, football players, we do all that squatting. I got big thighs. I got big glutes. You know what I'm saying? So I got to make sure I got the right one. In the bedroom. We don't want to see your dumb. They pause. 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 All right, y'all. Now we've got Bucks QB, Baker Mayfield. Hey, he the best dress so far. Hey, Don in a nice Kobe <laughs> tee. <laughs> Showing love to the goat. Yes, he is. What do we think? Up, yes, this, is, this is basic. Yes, <laughs> this is so basic. Maya says basic. That's enough. Alexander McQueen, you know, with the little red, trying to match with the red. I see it, but it's basic. He could have 
He could have expressed a little bit more though, you know? See, but, but you got to understand the situation. Exactly. And the situation, Baker yeah. Mayfield, is the starting quarterback. Exactly. Starting quarterbacks can't come in too flashy. That's right. But you still want to make a statement. So out of all the quarterbacks in week uh, seven, he yeah. probably won. I don't know what Lamar Jackson had on. I don't know what Deshaun had on. I don't know what Kyler Murray had on. Mm -hmm. But I do know he is on the board. Only thing I would take uh, uh, change, I would take out the coffee mug. You know we're going to be talking about you on uh, game day fits, bruh. What's up? Well, I so I would take that out. And I love this. Even a simple detail. Sometimes we overlook little things like this. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. It's the details, JB. No, this is the detail. This is the, de the detail. That. Kobe. Bing. Humble mentality. He came in, put up 57 points. That's all we need to know. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all we need to know. It's a Because we coming to win the game. We ain't coming to win the fashion. We, we coming to win the game. He dropped 57. That's what he came to do. That's what we do. Okay. And speaking of QBs that handle their business, we also have Bears QB, Caleb Williams. That's right. Yes. 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 Michael Jordan. Paul Immediately, Paul. Yes. yes. This is the look of the week. Yes. That's right. This is the look yes. of the week. Iconic yeah. moment, well tailored. It took a risk. Yeah. Fire to me. Uh, Kayla, Nicole, um, my Burberry coach I wore in London, it was the same link. Nah, be yours in It was the same This link. is an oversized, you see the shoulder pads, you see the link on his, on his hand. This is an oversized look. It's extreme, it's exaggerated. Yours was just ill-fitting. <laughs> <laughs> I work on my measurements. I work on my measurements, but I love this. And then also, I, you, uh, details. Can't stress the details enough. Sometimes we take it for granted. Uh, I don't love this in his hand, right? So I'm a stickler, but this is a 10. But then when you get to the details, I got to take it down to, you know, a seven with that. I love his haircut, though. He's fresh, he's clean. He found the perfect look for him. And I think that's important for a man to find a look. You know, I found my ball. My bob is great. My dress is too stop. low, bro. Bro, stop it. For anyone wants everybody stop to know, they can't have a bob. No, no, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh, what is a bob? What is a bob? All right, now what is that? This it's is the a bob. Same way. It's a bob. Bro, stop, bro. <laughs> it's a bob. It's a bob. It's a bob. Hey, pause, man. Pause, man. This is a yes or no for y'all. What are we thinking? This is a yes. I think this is a Burberry wool coat. I, I love the textures on it. Pinstripe suit underneath. The composition is great. I love it. Yeah. Shoes. I like it too. I feel great job. Feeling it, man. It's, it's confidence. Getting off the bus, he's feeling the swag, feel good, play good. When you play good, they pay good, man. And my boy got the bag. So mm -hmm. it is. And I may I probably have to apologize too. You talk about uh the bag. He's probably getting the bag for holding these, right? Come on. So I apologize, Caleb. 10, 10, 10, 10. 10? 10, 10. All right, y'all. 10. We have a bonus. Ah! Okay. 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 Yes. The face. See, not everybody can do the face. Do the face again. Let's see if you can do the face. Do the face. Can we get a tight on Kayla? Let's see if she can put it up. Let's put it up. Oh, she got yeah, down. Yeah, 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 yeah. She was taught that. Yeah. Uh, she do <laughs> so these yeses across the board? That's a yes. That's a yes. yes. Okay. We're feeling it. We're feeling right. it. Uh, okay. Look at the detail. Though. The detail <laughs> on the little joint right here. I'm trying to try yeah. to find. I'm trying to find something. I'm trying to be a stickler, but you 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 did your thing. You crushed that one. Gave it up. Wow. That. Let me it. That's good. I appreciate the love. That is Game Fits. Make sure y'all download the Vivid Seats app right now and get into the game. Get in the game. Come on, mess it up, Kayla. Shot like y'all see me, but I. That's the team. You both team. Jesus Christ. of the NFL season, which means it's really just starting to get juicy and good. You know what I'm saying? Real good. This means that there is no shortage of viral moments from around the league. Let's run it back and tackle some of the best moments. And before we do, I gotta introduce my co-host. I'm here with some new faces this go round. We've got Mike Sims Walker. What's up, guy? What's good, what's good? How you doing? Good, how you doing? Great, great. Come on, let's go. I'll see you. Yeah. We've got Monty Love in the building. Yo, man. Oh, boy, Monty. Mr. Love. Yep. 
and the one and only Josh Bellamy. Come on, man. What's we up, Adolph? Yeah, you know what it is. We ain't gonna... oh, oh. All right, let's jump into <laughs> it, y'all. Not a great look for Eagles coach Nick Sirianni as they barely survived against the Browns. He was caught on camera post game talking trash to Eagles fans. What is he doing? Run the like, tape. Run what do you tape. think? What do you think he's saying, Josh? He we like, can't he, he hear the audio. Here. But hold on, hold on, run it back, run it back. You see when he did that right there? Yeah. He's telling them like, I can't hear you, motherfuckers. <laughs> I heard your last drive talking shit about my play calling. Come on, motherfucker, we winning now. But, we winning now. But, bro, we winning now. It's the Browns, though, bro. It's the Browns, though, bro. What is? And how you screaming at your? It's the Browns, though, bro. He works in the players. Hold on, hold on. It's the Eagles. We've been in the slump. He been in the slump, so mm. right now he trying to, hey, 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 you, hey, come on. The Eagles are like one of the most decorated teams on paper. Yeah, but we I ain't gonna lie. We expect way more than them to beat the Browns. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm gonna tell you I something. Agree. Nick was my wide receiver coach. He was my wide receiver coach when I was in Kansas City. He brought me to San Diego with him when he was a wide receiver coach, and he ended up getting a job here. But one thing I can say about him, he's a very, very passionate dude. Mm. He, he loves, like, drawing up plays, calling those plays, so, like, he really taking this serious. So you know what he's saying? Players fall back. Mm, I got Let this. the coach do that. I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the flame for this one. <laughs> Y'all shut the fuck up, okay? <laughs> I need to call some shit and I'm having a hard time. So I need y'all to please be quiet. Mm. That's what he's saying. I feel like that's not a good look as our leader of our football. No, it's not. It's and definitely not. For your scream at your own fans. Hey, but guess what? Who better to do it than the coach? You're right. <laughs> hey. I'm with you on that. All right, y'all, next up, former Seahawks teammate Russell Wilson and Marshawn Lynch hanging out before the game. This is a Steelers game. They did a little one last handoff. Yeah, he want to hand it off. That's the handoff oh. he should have gave to him in the Super Bowl. Yeah, he changed the play, oh. Russell. Nine, nine years later, you want to hand it off now. Man, oh. we I all think at... Marshawn Lynch is dead so he don't get fined again. Wow, I'm gagged. I, I, feel, like, I feel like in this moment right here, he's just where you really miss the game at. Like, yeah, yeah. Right now, we, you don't miss nothing, but when you touch that grass, I just went to a Jaguar game. It was Legends Weekend. Mm -hmm. and I never miss football, but when I got out there on that sideline, it was different. Yeah, yeah. until you get on that field. Yeah, when the boys about to go to battle, and they scrapped up, and you know it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that's what that's I, right. I think that's what this moment is. Cute See, moment, cute moment. I still just want to know why he want to hand it off now. You talking about Russ's game? Yeah, no, no, that Why Super Bowl, we should have gave him that now. ball. Why you didn't hand it off in 2015? That's real. Let hey, us that's, know in the comments, that's Russ. A, that's a question. You got to bring Russ on here for that. Can you, can you bring me back to that time? I remember oh. mine. You remember it? I remember mine. The first, my first time getting a concussion, I had came from junior college. I went to Louisville. It was my first, my first, I want to say the first drive on kick return. Coach said, yo, if it's five yards in, stay in. Mm. Dude kicked the ball off. I'm so crunk because this is my first game coming from junior college. Dude kicked the ball off, he kicked it to the other dude. I'm telling him, yo, stay, stay. He like, hell no, go. We go wild. As soon as I turn around, I take one step, boom. Knocked out on the field. I'm looking. We got Charlie Strong as our head coach at the time. But I'm on the field. Finally, when I wake up, I'm looking, but all I can see is like feet. Looking like, what the fuck am I still on the field? I look up, my coach, Strong, Charlie Strong, he's standing over me like, Motherfucker, you better be dead. I'm like, hold on. I said, Coach Strong, I'm still on the field? He's like, bro, you got knocked the fuck out. I'm like, damn, for real? He better be dead, it's crazy. I'm like, whoa. But yeah, man, that happened to me, man. Hey, man, if you play the game long enough, bro, that's gonna happen, bro. Yeah, I don't know about like bro. that, Yeah. it's gonna happen, I think bro. the hardest hits happen in practice. You know what I mean? Like From your own I'm, guys? Yeah, 100%. No, facts. Like, in college especially, because you live. I mean, spring wow. football, you don't play nobody. Yeah. You know what I mean? So y'all full pads every day, live every day. And we used to have one-on-one -on -one tackling drills, angles. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And Definitely. I can remember I played DB a little bit in college. And Brandon Marshall, 6'5", 230, he worked out with the tight ends. <laughs> and he out there going against little corners that, I mean, little receivers that, I mean, cornerbacks that's, like 175. Who's yeah. gonna talk with Brandon at 245? Not me. And you got a little cone on 175. Oof. So side, he used huh? to go down and practice. Those are the, the biggest hits I've seen. Yeah, yeah, that's why they pay y'all the big bucks. Chalk it up to the game. All right, y'all, that is Run It Back, presented by Vivid Seats. Download the Vivid Seats app right now and get into the game. Get in the game. Fools. B. Marshall, I am Athlete here checking in. Come with me on the go as we go through London on location. Anybody need a beer? Let me pour one for you. We're sitting in a pub with the on-location guests. This is our first experience. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Bro. We're on location. I like this. So my name is Brandon Marshall. Some of you guys that may not know.
go with I Am Athlete. We're in your city. Such an amazing international game experience. We were invited back. So I think we're gonna be back. The Dallas Cowboys are currently 0-4 at home mid-season, opposed to what happened last year where they were in a better position. Every year is different, and here we are. And there's been a lot of conversation on who to put the blame on. So the bigger question is, who is the guy that needs to take accountability? I'm gonna start with you because this is your team. And I don't know how this is your team when you from New York and you should be picking the Giants or the Jets, but mm. you chose to pick the Dallas Cowboys. So we're going to start with you. Who is it, Manny? Mm. Listen, it's the owner. That's right. It's, it's the owner. I agree. He's to put, he put the team together. He put the coaches together. I wasn't a fan of letting certain people go last year. And I kind of knew this offseason when we didn't make no moves. I was like, I highly doubt. I don't even think we're going to make it to the playoffs. So... Um, that's why I got this gray hair in my beard, cause it's, <laughs> it's just every year, man. Every year. Hey man, don't sound like these. You sound like all the rest of the defeated. Cowboys. I'm not defeated. Sound like the rest of the Cowboys I'm not, de right I'm not now, defeated, man. but I got it. Come it's, on. It's the it's the it's the owner. So so JB, every year uh, there's a conversation um, around the Dallas Cowboys. This is the year. This is the year. Did you go into this year believing that the Dallas Cowboys, you know, could get it done? Look at it, 12 and 4, 12 and 4, 12 and 4, and now it's like, all right, Dak, get his money, et cetera. It's the same thing every year. They're going to have a good record every year, 12 and 4, whatever it's going to be. They're going to have a good record every year, but everybody knows what the Cowboys going to do, and it's time to get to the spot they need to be in the playoffs. They never do it. And we don't put – we don't got new coaches. The quarterback, it ain't the quarterback. Because the quarterback, he do his thing, he, you know, he can only do what he can do. What we're going to say is Jerry Jones. At this point, Jerry Jones, because you run the team, you bringing the players in. You ain't getting a man no help. All he got is C.D. Lamb. He don't got nobody else. They need another big receiver. Mm. And C.D. Lamb, really, he's not really a one. He's a two. C.D. Lamb is not a one. You he's not a one. one. He's a two. He we need a big up, receiver. Listen. Listen. He's a number one receiver. Well, listen. He's a number Whoa. one receiver. I, you going to be the number one if I throw you the ball all the time. No, of course you're going to be the one. Not. No, you're not. not. Tyrese don't make you a number one receiver. Okay. Yeah. He's the one. He needs somebody else on the other side of him, He bro. do. One thing. Hold on, but he needs somebody else on the other side of him. Because he said that was a big Because he's not a one, bro. He's not the one. Hey, fact check Hollywood. How many yards did C.D. have last year? He's not the one. But you got to be clear, because I want to make sure you're clear. If I throw you, you the like, ball all game, no, you better like, have a 1,000 yards, no, bro. like 1,700 yards. I don't care. Like you're throwing them up. He's the only receiver they got. And we're dealing with some no, injuries. No. Cooks, bro, he's the only got, receiver Cooks they got, got bro. No, Cook got okay. hurt. Who else they got? Cook. That's, the pro that's another Who problem. Who else they, they got? got? That's a problem. Who else is we getting I the ball? Listen, listen, we agree with you there, but you made that statement. I'm agreeing with you there, but that don't mean You said he's not a number one. I wasn't the one, B. But if you give me the ball 13 times a game, I'm going to be the one. That don't mean no. no, 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 no you're going to be the one, bro. Let me pull up CD Lamb after the catch. Pull it up. Yours, that's a catch. Pull it up. All right, so Scott. Ain't no Megatron over there. What? That's a one. What's a one? What's a one? A Brandon Marshall. What's a one? 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 What's to, to, to man, clean that up. Hey, we man, didn't want to do that, so I'll let you have that. They need another who's, receiver on the side. Who's the blame? Who's the blame? Who's the blame? 100% Jerry Jones. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely Jerry Jones. The problem Jones. is, not only they don't have enough pieces, he didn't even want to play the, the, the main guys that he had. Yeah. I think Dak got paid the, the first first day of the first game, and then CeeDee Lamb ain't get paid till them in, in a training camp. So I ain't finna run through a wall for you. I had to bust my ass and fight just to get what I deserve. So now I'm out here and I ain't got no help. So no, I'm straight. I'm finna go out here and do my job so and be you, selfish. So you saying that because they didn't get paid that they ought to have doing it. You know, that's a bad look. So here, here's what I would say. I go back to Super Bowl 50, I believe, and I had an opportunity to be on CBS, do the little show, and I was with Sean Payton. I asked, I pulled him aside, I said, Coach Sean Payton, you know, who you like this year? And I start naming like 10 teams. He said, whoa, 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 that's way too many. He said, "There's every year there's only 
really like four or five teams that have a real chance. Everybody else is going to F it up. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Jerry Jones put the Dallas Cowboys in that space. He effed it up. So, yeah, well, you can turn on the film and you can talk about this turnover, that turnover from Dak. You could talk about, you know, this guy and that guy. But at the end of the day, why did you take so long to pay Dak? Why did you take so long to pay CD? Right. Do you not think you've been in these seats before, bro? You know how that mess up the chemistry and the flow in the offseason. Exactly. Offseason is important. It's important, but it's not important. It's not important from the standpoint how they run things. I don't agree with this cookie cutter approach of how we do the offseason because I can get better on my own. Mm -hmm. But us being together is important. Mm -hmm. And when you got CD, CD that start in training camp, he was right around the corner. So to me, that's why I say it's uh, Jerry Jones and it's bigger than anybody else. And now we're going to be sitting here. Jerry Jones, I'm looking at the camera right here. Can I, get, can I look in the camera? Can I get the camera right here? Jerry Jones, before you even think about firing in a coach, trading any player, you need to look yourself in the mirror. Facts. Because if I, we all will sign up for Coach McCarthy to take your team and, and, and deliver 12 and four record, a 12 and four record, a 12 and four record. Didn't he do that three years in a row, right? So that's all you want as a player is a chance. You had the opportunity to keep the chemistry and continuity going and built off of that and fix those things in the offseason, but you chose not to pay C.D. Lamb. This dude over here, Josh Bellamy, say he ain't the one. Man, he ain't he the put one. up 17, over 1,700 yards. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why it takes so long for you to pay? It, wait, whoa, whoa. If you put A.J. Brown on the team with C.D. Lamb, who's going to be your number one? Ooh, that's tough. All right, hold on, that's hold on, what hold on, I'm trying to tell you, bro. No, 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 He's no. the only receiver. Yeah, he's the number one. B. We we when we, we all we all we played together, right? He's not a number one. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, number two. Who, 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 me, Martellus, and Alshon Jeffrey. Who was the number one? You was until Alshon Jeffrey emerged. Hold on, hold on. Until he emerged, B. You can't make the club in the tub. You was hurt. You went up. He was the number one. I don't want to hear nothing else. The way I look at it is um, I had to adjust my game. When Marty came in, Marty went to the Pro Bowl. Alshon went to the Pro Bowl. Matt right? Forte. We all had eight plus. Matt Forte had over 100 catches and, a, you know, over 1,000 yards. And what happened is we all became the one. Yeah, but this, so we, that's not the so, case. So when you ask that question about A.J. Brown and C.D. Lamb, I don't – there's no separation between the two. It's like what the you the one mm -hmm. on this particular play, and then when they roll cover to you and they double you, then you the one. So for us to sit here and say that CD is not a one is crazy. How I define a number one receiver is this. Mono e mono cannot beat you. So yeah. now let's take the top DBs, uh, Jalen Ramsey. Let's take the Pat Pat uh, Sertan out in, uh, uh, in, in Denver. Who else do we got? Gilmore, long in the tooth, but he's still uh, a dog at corner. And you can name all the top corners right now, even the young boys. And I promise you, C.D. Lamb is going to show well against those guys. It ain't going to be sweet, but he will beat those guys one-on-one -on -one more than he loses. Because that's what the race, we know where we're going. Yeah. Against who? Way more than he loses. Against who? Name, name the top corners. You said against Jalen Ramsey. Name the top corners. Against Jalen Ramsey, though. Correct. Against Sauce Gardner. Yes. That's right. Against yes. these dudes. One-on-one. On one. Who you think he's, he's doing? He's getting against? the ball all game. First off, we ain't going to talk about Sauce Gardner because he don't even travel. We talking about real true corners. That Patrick Peterson, he, he man, this man, stop me. I feel like nobody really travel these days. I think that's kind of extinct right now in football. You don't see too many corners just traveling a number one receiver all game no more, like Revis did or like Pat P did. Hey that's man, extinct All right I'm going to say, football. man, is when I, with me, a number one receiver is a number one, a somebody who's taking over the game. We played against Megatron. You seen Megatron. All right, so Unstoppable. That's a okay, number okay, one. Look at Megatron record. Okay, but we're not worried about the record. But, but you we're not talking about the record. We're talking about what Dallas Cowboys did. record. We're talking about CD numbers. You know what we're talking about? Right what's now? The That's difference? the trick. But see, listen, look what we're doing right we now. We can talk about Jerry Rice numbers all day, and now we go get Randy Moss. Who you taking? No, you just said. You Who just you said, taking? Look at Calvin. I, I, this Johnson. is what I believe, and this is why it pushes back. And we all said this, and this doesn't even make for great TV when we all agree. The question was. Who needs to take accountability? Who's at fault? Oh, Jerry Jones. And we all Thanks. said Jerry Jones. Because what happens in today's football, and you can go back to our team, when you got three special pass catchers and a running back in the backfield, That's it different. makes it dynamic, right? They don't got that. Now, if CD had those other guys, a Martellus Bennett or Alshon Jeffrey and a mm -hmm. Matt Forte in the backfield, can he 
sit back and say, all right, I'm not going to have 1,700 yards. Not I'm going to have 1,300. I'm going to have 1,400. So to me, if you want to win in today's game, you got to have at least three pass you catches. You got to have it. Yeah. And Easy. they don't have that. Sure. And that goes back to Pollard. Jerry Why he got Jones. 1,700 Jerry yards. Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones, please, before you fire Mike McCarthy, before, before you do anything, please look yourself in the mirror. You know, owners, o- o- owners are trash, too. Owners make bad decisions. Now, you're a great businessman. Phenomenal job there. The most valuable franchise in ball and one of the most valuable sports franchises in all of sports globally. Great job. But when it comes to you getting the job done as a general manager, you have failed. And it's been 30 years since the Dallas Cowboys won a Super Bowl. 1995. Was the last time the oh, Dallas Cowboys won the Super Bowl? That's telling you. And yeah, you know what? I'm starting to believe, work. and I need to end this show right now. Kayla Nicole Brown is not here, so we need a real host. But guess what? I'm gonna take another 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm gonna take another 30 seconds. I'm gonna take no. <laughs> and this is what I'm starting to believe as I land the plane. I don't know if Jerry Jones really want to win. We it's been 30 that. years, and you got all the resources. It's been 30 years. Jerry Jones is probably more excited and more focused on the valuation of his business and the revenue coming in to actual Super Bowl. That is the trick, and we keep following it, and I'm following it too every year. They got me. I'm just like you. Nah, the last okay. five years, oh, this is the year. This you is said the year that this year. year. You said I said it every year. I, if I you, said I just said it for five years. I don't think this. Jerry Jones don't want to win. I think Jerry Jones don't know how to win. He's not in the – he's. He's just well, not first of all, if you knew how to win, you would know what it take to win and the players that you need to win or to build a team to win. And, and I don't and think he does that very well. Jerry Jones, please listen. And Jerry Jones, please listen to What's the Deal right here on I Am Athlete presented by Vivid Seats. Go download the app, the Vivid Seats app now, and earn rewards on your tickets. This has been What's the Deal. <laughs> I'm here so I won't get fined. Easy,